Hi, I'm Estelle, Curriculum Content Developer for Digital Schoolhouse. In this masterclass, we'll look at how you can write pseudocode to plan how your game will work. Before starting to write your pseudocode, I really recommend that you complete one of these mechanics sheets. So what I've done is I've done a sketch of one of the scenes that I'm going to be working on. I have added some of the objects and actually labelled them. So you can see I've labelled me, which is the character that's playable in my game and I've numbered the houses one, two, three, four, five, and I've written down some of the events that are happening in my particular scene. So you can see that if I press the W key, it moves the me character up one space. If I press the A key, it moves the one space to the left. If I press S, one space down. If I press D, it moves the character one space to the right. Um, but the one that I'm going to look at more closely and show you an example of how to write your pseudocode for is the one that says if the me character is touching a house, switch to inside that house. So once you've done this, make sure you've done it for all of your scenes. That will really help you set up your ideas of how you're going to write this out in pseudocode. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how I can write this using a flowchart. So you don't only have to write it in pseudocode. If you find it easier to write it in flowchart format, then do so. That's absolutely fine. So just to remind you, we're looking at the event, which is when the character touches a house, switch to a different scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these symbols up here, which are the flowchart symbols. I've got a process symbol, which is a rectangle, start and end symbols, which are the oval, input and output, which are the parallelogram, and the condition, which is this diamond shape. So let's start with the start symbol. And I'm going to add a condition. So the condition is going to be if the me character is touching a house. Okay, and if they are, so if yes, that is going to cause a process, because it's a computer doing something for us, which will make it switch to interior of house. Okay. So I probably want to put the numbers on here because I'd need to do one of these for each of the houses. So if touching house one, switch to the interior scene of house one, and that would be the end of that particular flowchart. So what effectively I've created is a little um, function that will only be run if the me character is touching the house, that is house one. If yes, switch to the interior scene of house one and then end that particular function. Now, what I need it to do is if it's not touching, we want it to keep checking. So that will just go back to the start again. There we go. So I'm just going to add the arrows in to show the direction that the uh, program is going to run in. So start, if the character me is touching the house, if it is, yes, switch to the interior scene of that house and then end that particular process. If not, just keep repeating around here, keep checking until that particular condition is met. So that is the first of our events. What about our WASD event? Let's have a quick look at what that might look like. So we're going to say again, if we start, we're going to have a condition again. If, uh, which one should we do first? Let's do the W key. So if W key is pressed, and again, we're going to have a process. So let's move me one space to the up one space up that's right so move one space up and then that will be the end of that particular event or would it actually we don't want it to, to stop we want it actually so i'm going to change that because we want it to keep checking because actually once we've moved it one space we don't want it to just then stop in actual fact what we want to do is loop it up here say once it's done that one space go back to the thing to the start of the flow chart and just check to see if the w has been pressed again if the answer is no it hasn't been pressed it also goes back to the beginning there we go so if w key has been pressed move the me character up one space and then just keep checking so as soon as that condition becomes true the character's moved if it's not true it just keeps checking okay so that's how you can do though the mechanics using flowcharts this is perfectly acceptable. If you find this easier, go ahead. 
um, use flowcharts for your explanations of how your mechanics work. The other thing you can do is you can write it in pseudocode. Now pseudocode isn't a formal language, there is no correct way of writing pseudocode. It just needs to be understandable. So you need to think about how you're going to write it so that you could give it to another person and they could actually code your game from your pseudocode. So I'm just going to write out what the pseudocode I think would look like for both of these two flowcharts that I've just shown you. So I'm going to start with the flowchart for if the character is touching the house. So I'm literally going to write it out like in English. So I'm going to say if the me character is touching house one, then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to indent this to show that this is something that only happens if, the, if this is true. Um, normally you wouldn't put speech marks around it, but I wanted to show that these are the objects I'm talking about rather than um, a little bit of my actual language in the pseudocode. Normally you put speech marks around to show that it's a string, so just be aware that this probably wouldn't be correct if you're doing this in your computing, but you might want to show a different way that these are objects, maybe put a box around them or something just to show that these are the objects in your game. So if me character is touching the house one, then it's going to switch to the scene that's called interior house one. Okay, so there's mine. That's really simple. I could add a loop um, to say that this needs to keep happening. This condition keeps needing to be checked while the game's running. So I could put a button here, while game running. And that just means that all the time the game is running, it will check this um, condition to see if it's true. Um, and then the other one, which is the one for whether or not the key is being pressed, again, let's have that while loop. So while the game is running, then I'm gonna indent again to show that the next bit of code is only gonna happen if this is true. And it's gonna be if, W key is pressed and then move. I'm going to use that little box again to show that this is one of my objects. Move me one space up. Okay, there you go. So I've started to write some pseudo code to explain how the mechanics in my game work. As I said before, there's no right or wrong with pseudo code, but it does need to be understandable so you can read it and understand what's going on in the game. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed looking at how you can plan your paper prototype to enter this year's MOBO Game Jam. Don't forget, read the brief really carefully and good luck with entering the competition.